welcome. I'd like to begin the meeting tonight by welcoming all of you, and uh, especially to our first public broadcast at the town council meeting. I'd especially like to thank all the volunteers who have worked so hard to make tonight possible, and particularly Leslie Ferguson, our volunteer coordinator, who made the extra effort to, to get tonight's broadcast out to the public. I'd also, I, all of the councilors are also in hope that by broadcasting our local meetings, that we will improve communications between the elected officials and the townspeople. So tonight is a historical night in Cape Elizabeth. Now, the meeting would now please come to order. I'll ask the town clerk to make the roll call. Jane Amaral? Here. Penelope Carson? Here. Lester Jordan? Here. William Jordan? Yep. Frank Latore? Here. Nancy Masterton? Douglas Tinsman? Yep. We have six counselors <coughs> present and one absent this evening. All right, before we continue, uh, begin our, our agenda, uh, this week has been set aside as Municipal Clerks Week. And uh, we on the council tonight would like to recognize our town clerk who comes to all of our meetings, records everything that we say, and doesn't get a chance to say one word. So in recognition of, uh, of her hard work and her dedication to the, to the town, we have a little corsage tonight for Debbie. In, honor of, in honor of town Municipal Clerk. Just don't record all we say. <laughs> she said it's historical or hysterical. <laughs> okay, are there any corrections to the minutes of the April meeting? I move it be accepted as printed. Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries six to nothing. We now begin uh, the public hearing section of our meeting tonight. This public hearing is, is to hear comments from any of you in the public on technical revisions to the sewer ordinance. And I'd like to ask Frank Latore, who's the chairman of our ordinance committee, uh, to briefly discuss, uh, explain to us what these tech technical revisions are all about. Frank? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, when we last met as a town council, we discussed these technical revisions pretty much in depth when we decided to set this public hearing. Uh, the technical revi revisions to the sewer ordinance, the sewer ordinances of our town haven't been done in quite a while, in two decades as a matter of fact. So what we did was the ordinance committee met with the uh, town manager, with the town engineer, and we discussed the need to update uh, some of the jargon as well as some of the specific engineering and technical standards to uh, make our present ordinances come up to, to snuff, so to speak. So you can imagine if they haven't been updated in about 20 years that it was time to bring the technical jargon and the technical uh, standards up to snuff. So this is basically what we have before you tonight. It's the technical revisions right now uh, at the public hearing for the sewer ordinance amendments. Would anybody from the public like to speak on this item? May I Certainly. Yes. Would you introduce yourself, please? I just want to ask what is meant by the technical revisions. Is this something different from your preceding meeting on this general subject? Uh, from the hearing that we had a couple of weeks ago? Yes, this is different. This has to do with the sizing of the <coughs> sewer pipes and the depth and that kind of thing. Yeah, rather than that, that page you have there, <coughs> the two pages you have there was about a 20-page technical you know, really measuring the, the size of the dots. And I don't want to see that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Exciting reading, I can assure you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. If not, then I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, we move on now to item number 87, which is to consider approving the proposed technical revisions to the sewer ordinance, the, uh, the provisions that we just talked about uh, in, at the public hearing. Do I hear a motion on this item? Yes? Madam Chairman, I move uh, the motion to accept the technical revisions to the sewer ordinances. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, Councilor Jordan. Uh, I have two questions, maybe. Uh, first, uh, what are we using now with the, with the construction that's been underway for the last year or so? 
Yes, uh, I'll ask the town manager to answer that. We are using these standards, uh, but without the, the force of ordinance. Uh, the contractors have voluntarily complied with them. <coughs> Very good. Uh, the second, I guess, on the first page, uh, number three, uh, fusion crust crushed stone. Uh, does that mean crushed stone from the main uh, trunk line in the street to the to the each individual home, also as well as crushed no. stone along the street? Uh, no, Councillor. The, these standards are just for the sewers within the roadways themselves. As a separate set of standards which are for the, the so-called building sewers which lead to the homes. Uh, what's the reason we use crushed stone under any of the sewers? I, I, it's generally what is done at this point. Uh, I'm not an engineer and, and can't answer directly uh, the reason for it. Generally, uh, to have drainage under the pipe and uh, you know, beyond that, I'm not too sure. So if the pipe leaks... I, I would not think so. That's all the questions. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor of the motion? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries six to nothing. Item number 88 is to consider a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding amendments to the sewer ordinance. Council Latore? Uh, we received recommendations from the Sewer Advisory Committee and worked on them, and what you see in front of you is the final result of our work. What I'm going to speak on tonight are three different amendments, and one area that we left the same where there was a proposed amendment. If you turn to your packet here, you'll see on page one, uh, the first amendment, which basically boils down to if you don't want to pay your sewer availability fee, you may waive it in perpetuity by saying that you'll never connect to the sewer and registering that fact in the uh, Cumberland County Registrar of Deeds. Now this is applicable to a single lot or to two or more contiguous lots in an area. So in other words, you can get your uh, sewer availability fee waived if you say in perpetuity I'm never going to want to hook up to the sewer. However, if you should change your mind or if you should sell the land and later someone else changes their mind, two things happen. You have to pay all the back sewer availability fees plus the interest. And secondly, you must demonstrate to the town that there's sufficient capacity. So this is one of the key amendments in terms of, it's been much, much discussed, the sewer availability fee. This is one way that you can state that you don't have to pay that fee. But you have to, you have to promise that in perpetuity you don't want to develop it. And you can change your mind later and uh, pay, pay the money and, and prove to the town that there is still capacity in there. Secondly, on page two, if you'd all turn the page, we see marginal soils were talked about. If you have a, sub a new subsurface disposal system going in on marginal soils, what you need to do now is build a separate laundry system for that. Now, one thing that we discussed in depth at the committee was whether this should be for just subdivisions or for all homes, and it was decided that it should be for all homes. So it's not just for subdivisions. It's for all new homes. Subsurface disposal systems will now require a separate laundry system. We, we felt that if it was applicable to a subdivision, why shouldn't it be applicable to, to any home that's on marginal soil? We felt it was a good safety thing to protect wells, etc., within the town. The, down the bottom of page two, you'll see our third amendment that I'm going to speak about, which is regarding citizens' petitions to get sewer extensions. All we've done here is a very basic thing, which is add that whatever the construction is done, and no matter who pays for it, whether it's the citizens or the town pays for this extension that's asked for, it will be dedicated over to the town. That's just kind of a technical uh, wording that we needed to put in there, meaning the construction, the sewer pipes, etc., will then belong to the town. The last area that I will talk about briefly is something that isn't an amendment but is rather staying the same. It regards the percentage to be raised through the user charge system pertaining to costs associated with the construction and use of the sewer system. The present ordinance states that not less than 90% of costs may be raised through the user fee. The Sewer Advisory Committee has recommended that we lower this to 80%, but the Ordinance Committee is tonight coming in with a recommendation to leave the present ordinance at 90%. This means not less than 90% of the costs can be raised through user fees, but it also means that more than 90% of the costs can be uh, raised through user fees if the Council so votes that. 
And I do want to stress that at this time, that we're not voting on the actual percentage at this juncture. What we're voting on is the parameters of which that percentage may fall in. So if you have the 90%, theoretically, the remaining percentage, which is 0 to 10%, uh, will come through taxation. We will be discussing that at item number 89, where we actually set that. This is just the ordinance change that we're talking about. Um, after considerable deliberation and, and meetings with the Sewer Advisory Committee and public hearings, uh, to summarize my comments on this, I'd say the Ordinance Committee did not subscribe to the Sewer Advisory Committee's theory that 80% be the new figure, meaning 20% raised through taxation could be used to pay for, in their words, quote, the capital costs for those elements of the system necessary to replace or upgrade the Spurwink facility, plus paving and storm drain costs. We felt on the committee that if the referendum had failed and the town was forced to upgrade the Spurwink facility, there was no preset plan as to how that would be paid for. Thus, we didn't develop a linkage between uh, the, spur, the, the need to upgrade the Spurwing facility if the re referendum had failed and the uh, need to increase the taxation level to a possible 20%. Some of the other councillors mentioned that we can foresee other increases in taxes that are coming up, so we had to be extremely careful with how much we uh, ask the taxpayer of the entire town to, to have a burden on this one. And finally, I felt very strongly about a newsletter that went out before the referendum from the town council that used the figure, quote, 10% of taxa uh, to taxation in explaining examples about what cost would be to the citizens. I feel that to raise the percentage now would be to change the rules in the middle of the game, so to speak, and there would be uh, a breach of faith with the citizens. We do want to say, though, however, from our committee that we are deeply thankful to the Sewer Advisory Committee for the extraordinary good work that they did. It was a difficult job, a highly technical job, and these people are volunteers that came forward, and, and I really feel that all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth owe these people a great deal for, for the volunteer work they have done in putting all of this together and, and giving us our recommendations. So, Madam Chairman, uh, in summary, that is my report to you. Okay, thank you very much, Council Latore. I'd also like to just add to your report that the other recommendations that you were bringing forward were all uh, the recommendations from the sewer committee, uh, exactly as they recommended them. The only change is in not increasing uh, uh, the local uh, share of the user fee to 20%. Okay, now at this time, I'd like anyone who would like to speak to this issue uh, to please do so and to raise your hand and come forward to the mic so that we can be sure uh, that you're going to be heard uh, on public cable and to introduce yourself first before your question or comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak to this issue at this time? Yes. impressive equipment and so forth. My name is Hickok. I said that Beach Bluff Terrace. I would like to make it very short and sweet and say, in effect, amen to Councilor uh, Latore's report just now. Um, as you know, at the last meeting that you had on this, there were quite a number of people in this room who opposed uh, the suggested increase to 20 percent, and it was people who were among the one-third of the Cape Elizabeth's residents who don't have any sewer and have to rely on what you call subsurface um, systems or septic tanks and the equivalent. Unfortunately, uh, while I'm glad that you folks heard what was said, uh, anybody else who had not attended this meeting uh, relying on the reporting that was done would not know from what was reported that you had quite a lot of opposition or that at least that the sewer committee had quite a lot of opposition much of it which was um, greeted by applause in this room and it not got mentioned in any of the reporting surprisingly I just want to add one thing in the second of the articles on the subject last meeting, there was a paragraph that said that one of the members of the Sewer Advisory Committee uh, 
having heard the protests of the people who were on sewer and who were not going to benefit from uh, the new sewer system, but were being asked to pay up to 20% of its cost out of their own taxes. Uh, he suggested or said that a continuing, they're continuing to study, quote, some kind of support system for septic tank owners. I don't recall anyone among those who were protesting the increase to 20% asking or suggesting that anybody find some money to help the septic tank owners. All that I think we were doing was saying, please don't go above the 10%, particularly since apparently up to now you're only uh, up to 6.9. I hope maybe you can keep it to that level. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hickok. Would anybody else from the public like to speak on any of these suggested amendments? All right. Is does anyone on the council have a question for uh, Council Latore or for the manager? Or a comment? Yes, Council Tinsman. Just a question, uh, Frank, in the uh, marginal soil aspect with the gray water disposal system. In these small lots, it may be marginal, and some of those lots may be in areas where there are wells. What's the state requirements for setbacks from wells for these gray water septic systems? And do they qualify for that setback requirement? I defer to the manager. Can you repeat the question? Well, in areas where there may be marginal soils and a replacement bed may be, may be necessary, these small lots and some of them in my neighborhood are on wells. If they're required to replace that system and go to a separate laundry system. Right. Are those new laundry systems required to be 100 feet away from the existing well as a wastewater system would be? And how do we enforce it or how do we give waivers if, in fact, creating that new system is going to cause an infringement on that well? Even after, hint, after listening to your question the second time, I, I think I understand the question, but I don't know the answer. Uh, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the details of the state plumbing code. Uh, you know, certainly there is that requirement that it does need to be so many feet from wells, and uh, certainly this would apply to those systems, uh, the, the septic systems themselves. And I would presume the laundry system would also, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, I would request then that some sort of waiver procedure be allowed within this ordinance change so to protect the integrity of a well system should mm -hmm. the occasion sure. arise. For the presently existing. S systems, what you're talking about right now, they may need That's to be right. replaced. That's right. I would assume that this that this technical change would apply to replacement beds as well as mm -hmm. new beds. So I would ask. We will look into that and get get back to you on that. Yes. Yeah, I just want to echo uh, his thoughts. I, I think that's very important because he's he's not in the only area that we have wells and there and in fact there may be some new development in areas uh, that will not have uh, city water so I think we need the answer to that yes council Carson since on item 88 it's our responsibility to send this probably to public hearing is is the item that the councilor Tinsman just raised enough to prevent us from sending that to public hearing setting a date tonight I mean, can we set a date on the ordinance as presented to us, or should, or do you think we need to wait for information on, on setbacks from wells on gray water? I mean, I, I'm willing to make a motion to send this to public hearing, but not if it's inappropriate, if, the, if this material is going to be, it's going to have a large enough change that we should not send it to public hearing. Does anyone know? I think, I think we just get a clarification. I think we can still set it for public hearing and get a clarification as to this particular thing, whether it'll be a waiver or whatever our particular way that we can handle it will be. But I don't think it should hold up going to public hearing. Okay, I move that item number 88 be sent to public hearing. The date is what? 6 8 87. Yeah. June 8. June 8. June 8, 1987. And then all the proper notification for public hearing be sent out. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. I just would like to mention that if it if it does uh, appear to be a problem, the council is due to meet 
uh, two additional times this month, once on the 18th to decide which is setting the public hearing on the budget, and then a second time to actually hold a public hearing on the budget. And since each of those are additional council meetings, if there's anything you actually want to add uh, to that, to this particular public hearing, you can do so at that time. Okay. Any, any other questions? Yes, Council Chair. Well, uh, can we get wording in here, even though we're saying we're setting it for public hearing now, can we get wording in there before the public hearing so that we can proceed? Uh, that's, to Nate? Yeah, that's what I was making reference to, Councillor, is that over the next few days I could find out the answer to that, that question and then uh, you could set that as additional information for a public hearing for June 8th, either one of those other two council meetings. All right, any further questions? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 6 to nine. Item 89 is to consider approving a proposed sewer user rate. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask the town manager, Michael McGovern, to uh, comment on this item. The way this particular rate order is laid out is very similar uh, to what the current rate system is. Really, the only change is uh, in the actual amounts and in the due dates and just the way that uh, uh, boarding houses are spelled out. Specifically, uh, the, it is proposed in this rate order uh, that new sewer fees go into effect uh, for actual sewer use uh, for the quarter beginning September 1, 1987. The first bills that citizens would receive based on these new rates would be, in would be received in December of 87. That the sewer fee under this proposed rate order is set at a level that provides for a 10% contribution from the tax rolls. Certainly the council could adjust that amount if you wanted to have a lesser percentage than 10%. Uh, this provides that the sewer user rate would be 8520 for up to 1200 cubic feet of quarterly measured water usage that compares to a current minimum rate of $48.06 for up to 1500 cubic feet of quarterly measured water usage the incremental charge or the, or the rate for added water usage is proposed to be $2.15 for each additional 100 cubic feet or a fraction thereof of quarterly measured water usage that compares to a current rate of $1.23. Uh, this rate applies uh, equally to all residential units, to all commercial units, public buildings, clubs, lodges, etc. The only variance, uh, variances from, from it uh, that are significant is that schools are billed a one user unit or one of those minimum charges for every 10 students, faculty, and staff. Uh, in addition, rooming houses, nursing homes, uh, and home for the aged uh, are by a complicated factor depending on the number of rooms. And I, you know, unless anyone's particularly interested in that, uh, I won't go into it at this point. But that is the, the proposed order that is bef before you, uh, Section A in particular. There is a Section B that would apply to a, a later agenda item. Yes, Council Carson. I'd like to put a motion on the table for discussion. I'd like to move that the town council tonight accept the recommendation of the ordinance committee and ask if you want me to read this. And what is it that you'd like me to read to put the motion on? Or do you want me to read, user charges shall be at a rate sufficient to approximate not less than 90% of the total cost providing sewage facilities and services to the municipality. Is that enough to put the motion on the table? No, it, in this instance, the rate order uh, A should be read okay. uh, one, Two and three. Okay. I would. Would you? I'd like to put a motion on the table, and I'd be happy to read that. Put your place. <laughs> Can I start with A, or should I start with the paragraph before? Paragraph. Order that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, pursuant to Section 15-1-11 of the Town Ordinances, does hereby revise the sewer service charge and schedule and adopt the following changes in accordance with the Town Ordinances. A. The following user charge shall be effective for the quarter beginning September 1, 1987, for all buildings within the town of Cape Elizabeth, which shall be connected to the public sanitary sewers of the town on or before the last day of the three-month period commencing September 1, 1987, or of any succeeding three-month period. $85.20 is up to 1,200 cubic feet of quarterly measured water usage. 
and $2.15 for each additional 100 cubic feet or fraction thereof of quarterly metered water usage. Said sewer service charge shall be applied directly for each separately water metered residential unit, commercial unit, public building except schools, church, club, or lodge building, or other sewer user within the town. Said charge shall be applied for multi-unit dwelling buildings, multi-unit commercial buildings, rooming houses, nursing homes, home for the aged, schools, and other buildings not subject to direct application under the preceding sentence as follows. One, the total metered water usage measured by each meter in a multi-unit dwelling and or commercial building or complex shall be divided by the number of units served through that meter and the result shall be deemed the water usage for computation of the sewer service charge for each such unit. Number two, the total metered water usage measured for a nursing home, home for the aged, or for a rooming house, being dwellings in which one or more rooms are available for rent, with or without meals, shall be divided by a factor equal to one plus one fourth for each room available for rent. The result shall be deemed the water usage for computation of the basic sewer service charge for such rooming house. This basic charge shall be multiplied by the above factor to determine the actual sewer service charge to be paid. Number three, each tent assigned students, faculty, and other employees of a private school or of the Cape Elizabeth School Department shall be deemed a separate billable unit consuming 1,200 cubic feet of water during each quarter hereunder, for which a sewer service charge in the amount of $85.20 for each such unit shall be paid for sewer use during the three-month period commencing September 1, 1987, and during each succeeding three-month period. Sewer service charges shall be billed on a quarterly basis, except that the town may, in accordance with the billing practices of the Portland Water District, bill such charges monthly, based upon monthly water meeting readings, and such monthly charge shall be an amount equal to one-third of the regular quarterly charge payable upon three times the water usage so metered. B. Effective May 12, 1987. Okay. No. Oops, sorry. I'd like to put that motion on the table, please, for discussion. We'll let you read that later. <laughs> you know, we'd like to do that. I didn't catch that. <laughs> Would someone like to second that long motion? I'll second. All right. Thank you for reading it, uh, Councilor Carson. Uh, this is a very important motion because it does set the rates that anyone on sewer will be paying uh, beginning September of this year. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to take comments from the public on the proposed sewer rates. Would anybody from the public like to comment? Yes. Members of the council, my name is Richard Davis and I've addressed the council uh, earlier concerning property that I own in Cape Elizabeth with uh, Philip Willard and I've also addressed correspondence to the council. Uh, the property in question, Woodland South, uh, contains 54 apartments. For the past, I think, seven or eight years, uh, we've been using an average of 1,200 cubic feet per unit per quarter for the entire 54 units. The average in the town of Cape Elizabeth has been about 1,800. As a result of that, we have paid for seven or eight years one-third more than, we, than the average sewer user in the town. And as I've explained previously, uh, many of these units are one bedroom. In fact, 12 of them are one bedroom. Six are efficiency. Uh, 36 are two bedroom. They're small units three of the, the average units wouldn't make up a single family home. And I have uh, re requested that the sewer committee and uh, the town through the manager make some special exception for Woodland South. I mean, we feel that we have actually subsidized the single family uh, homeowners in this town now for seven or eight years. And the facts prove this. The town has obtained the uh, figures from the Port Portland Water District and we have also. And we feel 
that there should be some exception for Woodland South. It's the only complex in the town of its size, or anywhere near its size for that matter, that is owned by individual owners, that is metered by two meters. And it is difficult, if not impossible, to compare this to uh, condominiums in uh, uh, Wildwood or Hobstone or these other places. And if, if exceptions are made uh, for the school system, if they're made for rooming houses and all of these other uh, facilities in the town, it seems to me that Woodland South uh, uh, should also be included in that. Our current uh, annual uh, sewer bill is about $12,000. Uh, with what is, as I understand, proposed here, or at least suggested here, uh, with the 10% uh, tax roll uh, contribution and the proposed uh, sewer rate of roughly $85 a quarter, the bill for Woodland South will be increased to about $18,000. The city of South Portland, the city of Portland, uh, both meter on actual water uh, usage where there are individual owners as we have at Woodland South. And the net effect of that is that if the complex were located um, maybe three blocks from where it currently is located on Woodland Road, the sewer uh, bill would be six or seven thousand dollars, about a third of what we'd be required to pay in the town. And we feel very strongly for the past seven or eight years that the several thousand dollars that we have overpaid in the town, and that now is the time for the town to take some kind of action because it's a special circumstance. There's, there's no other complex in the town that's owned by one or two individual owners that's metered by two meters. And uh, there's no condominiums, there's no nursing homes or rooming houses or, or any other facility that matches Woodland South. And I think this is the time for the council to, to look at it very closely and take specific action with respect to Woodland South. Now, another uh, minor problem that we have is that we pay uh, our sewer bill every month. And so at least for two months out of every quarter, the town has the benefit of two thousand plus dollars and with the increase it'll be three thousand plus dollars which continues uh, uh, forever and we feel that the, uh, there should definitely be an amendment to the sewer user uh, proposal so that we have the option of paying by the month as far as I know there's only three or four users in the town that pay monthly uh, the average homeowner has the privilege of paying uh, quarterly uh, we don't have that and we feel that that's definitely uh, one item that the councils should come to grips with right now and not let it go by until some subsequent uh, date and try to correct it. I mean, we feel that now is the time to do it. Uh, I don't have any strong feelings about the general tax participation of 10% uh, or 20%. I know that the sewer committee has recommended 20%, and I think it's incumbent on this council that you understand very clearly why the committee recommended the 20 percent and if they had strong feelings concerning that and what and the reason uh, the rationale for the 20 percent I don't completely understand it myself but I certainly think that 10 percent would be a minimum figure that this council should consider so those are basically uh, the points that I have to raise uh, with Woodland South um, I have nothing but praise for the sewer committee and for this uh, council, for the town manager who's assisted uh, Woodland South and, and other people that I've known uh, to try to get through this problem of sewers. I know it's ironic that after uh, 10 or 12 years of dealing with sewers, I come to this uh, meeting tonight and there's practically no one here. I think everyone is worn out, including me. But those We're are the. We're all looking for another issue. <laughs> thank you. But those are the problems that we have and we'd appreciate your consideration on them. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, we are in receipt of your letter and uh, I think are uh, familiar with and understand your concerns and uh, have turned your, uh, your concerns over to the sewer uh, study committee, the sewer advisory committee. Now they, uh, they really, I think, are the proper people to be looking into this at this time, and then we'll make recommendations back to us, hopefully before the new sewer rates uh, would go uh, online. Thank you. We want to pay our fair share, yeah. and we realize the problem in the town. We realize the heavy cost of, 
putting the pipes through ledge in the town, and we want to pay our fair share. But we, we think our fair share should be yet. Thank you very much for your okay, consideration. Okay, I think a few other people want to sure. say they might want sure, to make comments, glad to. comments or might have questions for you. Uh, do you want to make a comment? Just if councils want to go first, that'd be fine. But I, I spoke to Mr. Davis earlier about the subject of uh, quarterly versus monthly billing. There are a number of uh, m monthly customers in tables, including, for example, our hydrant rental charge. Uh, we do pay monthly. I, I think you know he's got a very valid point. Uh, you know, in every every respect, but you know, particularly that one, it's, it's something we could address. In the, if the council has no objection, I'd be glad to bring that issue before the Portland Water District and uh, suggest that uh, they do take a look at all the units that are being built monthly in Cape Elizabeth uh, that are residential and to convert them to quarterly. Okay, Councilor John. Well, that's my concern. I, I couldn't understand why uh, why he had to pay monthly when most everybody pays quarterly. Okay. We'll certainly look into that and, and see if we can get a, an answer for you and a change, hopefully. Yes, Council Pass. I just wanted to comment to, to Mr. Davis that, I, that I'd like my motion to proceed this evening as read. However, I, I did remember that we did turn that over to the Sewer Advisory Committee, and we are prepared to act on recommendations one way or the other concerning your concerns. But the, I would like this to go through as is, but the amendments to that, I think we'll have the time to address that. They, I think that they're meeting soon enough to address that. That, that are moving this motion, we all realize that that item is still before them, which would have some effect on wording. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else from the public like to speak on any of these suggested uh, sewer rates? All right, are there any counselors who would like to speak to this issue? Yes, Councilor Tinsman. Uh, just one comment uh, when we throw out the term 10 percent tax uh, participation of the sewers uh, our school system is broken down into a pay system whereby every 10 students faculty member or as penny read through the motion is assigned to be a user unit now 1600 students at $34.08 per student would equate out to about a 5.6 additional contribution to that sewer cost borne by our school system. Now, in my mind, whether these kids are home, or whether in school, or where they are within the town of Cape Elizabeth, they may be contributing to the system in one form or another. So. The 10% that you're, you're putting out as a motion does not take into consideration the additional costs to the taxpayer through the school system, which is an additional 5.6%. So is, does your motion mean 10% total contribution from the taxpayers, or does it include 10% on the tax roll, up to 10% on the tax roll, plus the 5.6% contribution through the school system? That's, I just want to be clear on that. I think the only part I'm going to answer is I think that we should be sure to use the word up to 10% uh, when we're talking about it and not set it at 10%. And uh, I don't know, did the Ordinance Committee address no, this? No, well, what this, is, what this issue is doing is setting it at 10%. I mean, the up to 10% was the ordinance part that we did earlier. Yeah. Now, this is specifically oh, okay, the 10%, yeah. so he's asking, red. yeah. With 5.6% on top? Right. That is on top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, you know, th there is no question that, that that is on top. The the theory behind the the, the percentage on the tax rolls uh, depends on you know that that's another contribution which which you can debate for for those benefits similar to what the sewer advisory committee recommended plus a number of other things. Uh, the school department will be paying a sewer bill of about fifty five thousand dollars per year the first year. That that is something that is a cost of schools. Uh, the schools are a considerable user of the school system. They are the, the largest sewer user, pay, sewer rate payer. Uh, in, in many respects, I think they deserve to be, uh, you know, because, because they not only they have the most uh, intensive use, but also particularly because of the swimming pool in the school. Uh, when they run that, when they drain that pool and run that chlorine through the system, 
it, it really causes uh, a number of problems. And uh, certainly they, they do have uh, a very large impact on what the size of the treatment plant needed to be, and they have a very large impact uh, on the actual use of it. Uh, yes, Councilor John. Yeah, I don't agree with uh, a strict 10% fee. Uh, we found in the past, we had in the past up to 10%, and we found in the past that we didn't need up to 10%. So I would hate to be locked in at 10% when maybe we had a windfall somewhere along the line that we could we could lower that to 6% or whatever. We'd only be locked in for this year, is that right? By passing this motion? This motion merely sets the sewer rates. The policy of 10% is by ordinance. And you can, even with the ordinance that's now in effect, you can go anywhere up to 10%. This merely sets rates within that mm -hmm. limitation of up to 10%. And it happens to be proposed at ten percent. In other words, we could have gone from we could choose now. We, earlier in the evening, we said it can go anywhere from zero to ten percent. Now this item is specifically nailing us down to what percent do we want? That's what this item is all about, as far as I understand it, for for a year. So this is, you know, in other words, earlier in the night we said we can go from zero to ten. That's up to us to choose. That wasn't part of that ordinance. All that said was go from zero to ten. Now we're saying the next item, which followed, was what percentage do you want it to be? And that's what we're debating now. Do you want it 10 percent, 5 percent, 4 percent, whatever we want it to be? That's, that's the item being debated now. Until another proposal comes before us to change it. The I rate would be 10 percent. If you vote for the item that's before you right now, if you vote for this motion, you'll be voting for a 10 percent uh, yeah, charge to the t general tax fund. I, under I understand that, but I mean, in the past, we, we voted 6 nine or whatever uh, so a year from now if we want to change it to that's right. down to six nine that's right, mm. All right. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, actually this rate it's hoped will be remaining in effect for at least three years uh, but you know if we find that revenues are coming in greater than anticipated you could do not one of two things you could lower the, the sewer user rate or you could lower the tax rate contribution to an amount less than ten percent Yes, Councilor John. I, uh, I had understood all along, and being on the ordinance committee, and I guess I must have missed something along the way that uh, we still had the option of up to 10%, up to 10%. I didn't know we was voting to lock ourselves into a strictly 10% issue. And uh, now, is a budget figured on strictly 10%? Yes. Yes. It, it's figured on strictly 10%, but you can certainly adjust it if, if you desire to. But the the previous budgets only used 6.9? The budgets a uh, number of years ago used 10%. Uh, there was a budget cut made around four years ago, which reduced, at that point, uh, a an annual contribution of $60,000 down to an annual contribution of $30,000. So it went from... Uh, Roughly at that point, we actually went a little under five percent. I, I, I guess I don't have really any big qualms about the ten percent. I think it is a betterment of the community, and and it goes along as far as paying some of the paving and what have you that everybody uses as far as the streets go. So I guess I'll go along with your ten percent. Councilor did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one other thing that I used uh, when we were talking about this in the Ordinance Committee. And it goes back to the original Sewer Advisory Committee report where we, I remember if you all remember, we had options listed from one, there was option one, two, two A, three, and four. This is basically option three, which is, in their words, an arbitrary assignment of the debt service to support $1 million of capital costs assigned to tax rolls. Option four was a 5% which is supporting $500,000, which would have covered just the, the, uh, storm sewer, the storm drains and the paving. So if you want to contribute just the storm drains and the paving, the 5% is the road to go. But if you wanted to contribute something over and above that, which is in this case an arbitrary $500,000 over and above that, based on that it benefits all the citizens that we clean up a lot of the messes that we have. And I, and I guess I'm supporting the 10% because I feel that is a strong argument. 
We could go back all the way to the five and say, well, all we're really responsible for is the paving and, and the, the storm drains. I can see that argument. But we all do, to some degree, benefit by cleaning up the town. And that extra 500000 is is that contribution, I think. I think it's important to keep this 5, 10, 4, whatever debate in terms of uh, the context that was laid out by the Sewer Advisory Committee as well. Yes, Council Carson? Well, I guess uh, that's what we're doing is giving our reasons for going to 10%. Uh, I'll just add a couple of things and so that the citizens understand maybe some of my reasons for keeping the wording in the ordinance the way it, it has been in the past. It's not just the the uh, the sewer users that benefit from everything. There are several things that would benefit the community as a whole. When we began to work on the sewer in the southern part of this town, one of the things that we kept referring to it as was a pollution control. We had a lot of pollution concerns within the community, and one of the reasons for moving forward on the southern system uh, sewer system was a for pollution control reasons. Um, there's a couple of things just to remind you of, and that is that uh, the project decision came from the citizens at large in the entire community, not just the citizens who were on sewer or who might be going on sewer. All of the citizens voted for the sewers. And the cost was somewhat increased from our anticipated in the early times because there was some citizen, some delays caused by citizen uh, initiate, initiate referendums. I think probably as a whole that the community is environmentally better now than it was or, or will be when we go online than it was before we voted. And things like the marsh, which all of us appreciate, our septic, our sewage system was then going directly into the marsh. That will not happen anymore. So we think that there are several items uh, besides paving of roads and things that will benefit the community as a whole. And for that reason, I agree with the motion as read that I would like to keep the ordinance as it presently stands. Would any other council like to comment on this motion? Okay, if not, are you ready to vote on the motion? All those in favor of setting the sewer rates as read earlier tonight, all those in favor of that motion? Effective uh, 9 187. Right, effective 9 187. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I think the motion carries six to nothing. Item 90 on our agenda is to consider approving a proposed sewer availability charge. This item is on the agenda because materials are not ready, the manager is uh, asking that we table this motion until the next meeting, the June meeting. Does someone like to make a motion to that effect? I move that the table to the June 8th meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 6 to 9. Item 91, to consider approving a proposed sewer connection charge. Okay, the, uh, the, the recommended sewer connection charge is $600, and we do have uh, language ready here if someone is prepared to make a motion at this time. Council Carson? I'll make a motion for the table put, uh, for the council. Regarding to item number 91, effective May 12, 1987, and pursuant to section 15-1-6B and section 15-1-6C of the present town ordinances, the connection fee, including inspection and startup assessment, shall be $600 for each unit to be served by the municipal sewer system. Said fee should be paid prior to any connection to said system. Units shall be calculated at the same method as our other sewer users, user charges. Second. Right. This recommendation comes directly from the, the Sewer Advisory Committee and it's uh, a $300 increase over what was charged uh, to connect to the Northern Sewer many years ago. Is there any, uh, are there any comments from the public on this, this item? Any any uh, questions or comments from council? Yeah, I have one comment yes, for the council manager. Uh, this six hundred dollars, as I understand it, in the way it was just read, is they don't have to pay until they connect, or do they have to pay when they decide to hook up? They pay just prior to connecting. So they can do the work, 
and then until they ought to make the connection, then they got to pay you. No, they, not quite. What they need to do is come in and apply for a permit. When they apply for that permit, it puts us on notice that we need to go inspect it. Uh, they should be doing it uh, approximately the same time. However, we will not allow any physical connection to occur until the $600 is paid. We will be sending out a notice to everyone uh, this summer explaining the whole process, the way it's going to work, as well as what all the fees are going to be. Well, as I understand this language, and I think I could read into it, that I didn't have to pay until I connected, not when I got the permit. This is not the way uh, no, this is the connection fee of 600 bucks. This has always been the way that it has been done, and it has been clearly understood by other contractors involved uh, that the actual connection cannot take place uh, until the fee is paid. I understand that, but I say you can come in and get your permit, and then you don't have to pay until you connect, is what I'm saying, and the way this language is. Well, you and interpret it that way, uh, you know, I think by spelling out that includes inspection as well as the startup assessment, it leaves it open to interpretation uh, the other way so that it does have to be paid up front. Certainly we'll look at it again and, uh, and be sure that uh, that is clear before the new sewer connections begin. That's all I have. Any other questions or comments? Just, yes, Councilor Tim. Just one question. When you hook, when the town hall goes online, how many units is the town hall? I don't know. Uh, it, I calculated it costs ninety thousand dollars to have got the school system based on that previous ten u ten students per unit. I'm just curious about this building as opposed to a Crescent Beach Inn or, or some other unit. Yeah, the, the school department first of all is already hooked up and will not have to pay this fee. Uh, the town hall, you know, I think it's really debatable whether it's one or two units. What the guiding factor is, uh, is are the assessment records in the assessor's office. Is this, if this is listed as a two-unit commercial, uh, then it, it would be done as a two-unit commercial rate. I, we only have budgeted, however, one connection fee at 600. If we have to come up with another 600, we will. Any other questions? All right, the motion before us then is to approve a $600 sewer connection charge to be effective immediately. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Everything is unanimous tonight. We're very agreeable. So far. Item, so far, right. Item no, number 92, to consider a re report from the ordinance committee relating to the fire protection and prevention ordinance. Uh, Council LaTorre's Ordinance Committee has been very busy lately, as reflected in tonight's uh, agenda. Almost every item uh, has uh, some connection with the Ordinance Committee. They've been very busy working. Council no, no charge for overtime either, Jane. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to discuss next is the amendments to the Fire Protection and Prevention Ordinances. These, uh, you can kind of think back to the technical uh, revisions we made earlier on the sewer ordinance when I said that it hasn't been done in quite a long time. Here's another group of ordinances that haven't been updated in quite a long time, and it's good that we're getting around to doing them. The ordinance committee met with Chief Webster and the town manager to review these ordinances on April 30th, 1987. What we have tonight is Article 1 and 2. We are going to be adopting whole new articles, so the councils will notice that we don't have our normal strike and underline uh, method because we're adopting whole new articles for Article 1 and 2. But I want to try to start with uh, some of the easy, the easiest ones. So if we could turn to the back page and look at Article 3. The amendment there is in Section 8.3-3, where we talk about the town managers executing agreements. All we've done here is add uh, with the authorization of the town council, which wasn't in there earlier. So uh, Article 3, everything else is the same except adding with the authorization of the town council. Um, going back now to Article 1, the real meat of Article 1 is in Section 8-1-1, which is the adoption of the code. What we've done here is adopt the Boca National Fire Prevention Code of 1987 for the town. Uh, that hadn't been updated in years, and now we're, now we're up to the present Boca standard, so to speak. Everything else in Article 1 is just amendments that are uh, specific to Cape Elizabeth that we needed to change according to our own peculiarities in the town. 
as we as we're running through, uh, my thoughts just turn to what some of the discussions were about, such as 8-1-4, open burning. You'll notice that we allowed the burning of leaves to continue in town. There was some talk specifically from me as to whether or not that was a health hazard or air pollution or, or an ongoing fall tradition that we just don't want to change in the town. And we unanimously decided to leave that, leave that in. With permit, that's right. You have to come into the town hall and get a permit. And I guess those go like hotcakes. The fire station. The fire station, I'm sorry, not the town hall. Um, then we have 8-1-5, which is the designation of the fire lanes, which are minimum 16-foot fire lanes that we have. We have 8-1-8 on the next page, which is sprinkler and alarm systems required, which was uh, building up some of the meat of this language regarding sprinkler systems and alarm systems that are allowed in our town. We have 8-1-10 on the next page, which are standards for self-service filling station. One uh, area that we deleted there, which I think is important to note, is we struck an old ordinance that said, quote, no new building for use as a combination grocery store service filling station will be permitted. We found that as in section 11 of that, of that ordinance that debated it and could see no logical reason to bar such an establishment given the safety standards that we had built in earlier in the ordinance. We we're asking uh, specific rooms or specific areas to be the monitoring area for the gas station. So I think to be in in Cape Elizabeth, uh, combination grocery stores and uh, gas stations made no sense, so we removed that. Uh, moving along to Article 2, which is a, a few pages down, we have basically there 8-2-6, which was penalties. We beefed up some of the penalties if you violate the fire regulations. The minimum penalty was $5, which we I think all thought was absurdly low. But we only raised it to $25 because the town manager has assured us that we're going to be re going over all of the penalties soon. So uh, this is just a stopgap effort. I, I still thought 25 was too low, but at least it's in here until we go into a more uh, extensive review of all the penalties. Um, that is it in terms of uh, amendments to Articles 1, 2, and 3. If Councilor Jordan, who was in attendance, wants to make any other comments that I may have left out. No, I just didn't know that you might want to point out the sprinklers are only allowed, are only required in uh, uh, buildings that are 40 feet in the maximum of vertical height and uh, contain 200 cubic feet in volume. And I didn't know that you might want to point that out at all. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that you've all read this thoroughly, but that is uh, specific in terms of the sprinkler systems, where sprinkler systems uh, must be in place, and where, you know, such as right here, approved, I'll read that part, uh, approved automatic sprinkler systems shall be installed in all new hotels, apartment houses, garden apartments, lodging houses, hospitals, and nursing homes, and in all other new buildings for residential occupancy, which A, have three or more habitable floors, or B, are not less than 40 foot in maximum vertical height above ground at any 10-foot section of their perimeter, or contain 200,000 cubic feet in volume, or contain five dwelling units, but only when the structure housing such dwelling units shall exceed two stories in height. So these are, I think these are taken basically from the Boca Codes, and uh, we, we debated them in terms of their applicability to our town and felt that that, would, you know, that was a fair standard to have in our town. We basically don't want too many people living under one roof or the building going too high, and if it does, you still need to ins install sprinkler systems for, this is of course for new construction. So th that was very much uh, discussed with Chief Webster at the meeting. Okay, first, are there any questions from the public on uh, these recommendations? All right, Councilor uh, Carson. Well, I, I for one am pretty impressed with the work the Ordinance Committee's been doing. This is very costly in time. To, to, to reword and work through all these ordinances, and they've done a terrific job. I would like to recommend to the move to the council that this item, number 92, uh, the Fire Protection Prevention Ordinance be set for public hearing on 6887. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All right, is there any further discussion? Council John. Yeah, I, I just wonder why all of these uh, are going to public hearing. Uh, 6887. Why couldn't we stagger some of these so that maybe we could all be here? I know I, I will not be here. Is there any uh, hurry to have this sent to public hearing? There is. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I just want to say in terms of the time, I think because the Boca standards are out of date and I guess it's kind of like once you discover it and it's out of date, there is a problem with the need to upgrade these quickly so that as new building um, designs are coming into town hall, these will be applicable, not the old standards. In terms of this, this is fire prevention, I guess, which is public safety and it would be good to facilitate it as fast as possible. Well, if it's right. That's the only reasoning for June 8th. We're going to act on it that night also, probably. Probably, unless we hear anything different. If you have any uh, any questions you want to leave uh, with the council, I know you you very rarely miss a meeting, Councilor Jordan, so I understand how you feel. But if you have any questions, we'll be glad to raise them that night. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> I have just one, yes. one other thing that I think should be... Uh, uh, pointed out here that uh, something that has never been enforced in the town and I don't think it's been within the ordinance is that anybody that has a uh, fuel tank above ground should have a dike around it and uh, this is something that we looked into when we put this ordinance together and uh, I see a gentleman in the back there who might be interested in this also I found it was very interesting and it doesn't to the size of the tank, regardless, if you only have a 300, 275, you should have a dike around it, similar to those big ones you see in South Poland. I just thought we ought to point that out. Very seldom do we police our ordinances anyway. No. Well, things are changing. The ordinance committee is working hard for changes. And policing of those changes. <laughs> <laughs> After all the work they've done, we're certainly going to police these, right? That's right. Okay. Any yes. further discussion on this? I have yes. a qu question and a very minor comment. But Bill, on that diking of your uh, of your tanks, it was particularly interesting to me because I know a lot of people with tanks, as you do, that are not diked. Uh, would those undiked tanks be grandfathered, or is that state law that just hasn't been enforced anyway? These are all pretty much state laws. I'm that, that was brought up at the meeting because... Uh, I says it looks like I might be in violation. Does that mean my tank that's on top of the ground or anybody, any homeowner that has an outside tank should be diked? And the answer I got was yes. And nothing about grandfathering it. Should have been done years ago. Mm -hmm. That means fuel tanks for furnaces also. What's that? That's fuel tanks for furnaces. That too. is correct. Any tank above ground on the outside should have a dike large enough to contain the number of gallons of fuel that's in it. Okay. Yes. My well, comment was Could under it be section 8-1-5 on fire lanes, minimum of 16 feet of what? Length, height, depth, width, <laughs> just for clarification. So that's width. not in terms of width. width. So that should be inserted for that public hearing. That would help clarify that, <laughs> yes. 16 feet of width. What number? I think, I'm sure it's a typo, as I was just pointing out to me, like, Council of Davis. We, we discussed that. We discussed that. We knew it wasn't height, for sure, Council of Davis. No. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, uh, we... I'll then call for the vote on item number 92, which is to send uh, these recommendations to public hearing on June... 8, 1987. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Item number 93 is to consider referring to the Ordinance Committee again. <laughs> Responsibility for reviewing appropriate agricultural and horticultural uses in residence zones. This is an item that was brought to our attention, to the Council's attention, by Council Lester Jordan. And I'd like to ask him if he would wants to comment at this time on this item? Certainly. I thought you might. Uh, it seems that uh, most of our farms are in violation. Uh, according to our ordinances presently, uh, farming is supposed to be done in the business zone. Specifically, if you want to add a greenhouse or maybe a silo or a barn that would be used in your business. And it looks to me, under the interpretations that we have, that someone wanting to start a new farming business might not be able to, unless it was done in a 
business zone. And uh, we don't have any farms in Cape Elizabeth in the business zone. So I think it really should be uh, reviewed. I think the intention is, uh, especially with the uh, comprehensive plan, that we were to try to help the farmers to save farming in this community, to save open space, and make the farm, uh, make the town affordable for everyone to live in. So I think uh, I, I would recommend this to go to the ordinance committee for uh, for review, and hopefully, uh, maybe in that at least that first meeting, I would think it would uh, behoove you to invite all the farmers that remain in the Cape uh, to have input. Uh, maybe they can tell you what they need to, uh, to be in this ordinance to, to uh, maintain uh, a farm use in this area. Uh, and then, then you can go from there. But it disturbs me greatly that, that the uh, building inspector uh, would, would allow a, a greenhouse uh, of such complexity and such value to be built in the IRA zone and not warn them that they couldn't couldn't uh, raise plants or sell them from that greenhouse. It seems to me that uh, for the citizens of this, this town, they should should point out things like that. Uh, especially, it, it, there was a lot of money involved in this particular operation that was that was closed down, and I I think it's time that we reviewed that uh, agricultural use area. Is that a motion? I mean, should I be second? Did you do I, motion yes, I, I will move that we send uh, the uh, this to the Ordinance Committee for review of the uh, agricultural IRA zone. Okay, is there a second to the second. motion? Yes, comment. Councilor Torre? I guess, my, you know, I'm in full agreement with what you're saying, except what specific ordinances are going to come to the ordinance committee? I mean, what, can you tell me what clauses or what exact sections are the problem sections? I mean, and that would also help me understand the problem a little bit more. What, what was enforced? I'm surprised it wasn't part of the packet somewhere, what specific ordinances we want to review, but it wasn't, so what, what are they? I'll ask the town manager to uh, answer that for you, The problem is in the permitted use sections of the zoning ordinance, and specifically, the permitted uses in the IRA zone, although it probably could also apply to the IRC zone, as well as the permitted uses in the business zone. Uh, unfortunately, the current ordinance uh, says that agricultural uses are allowed in both zones. Uh, however, then when you go to look at the business zone, it also mentions there particularly that horticultural uses, greenhouses, and nurseries allowed in the business zone. The code enforcement officer, as well as myself and the, the town attorney, uh, concluded by the very fact that that was mentioned as a permitted use in the business zone uh, and not specifically listed in the, the residential zone, that certainly there was the implication uh, that it was something that they did not want to allow in the, in the residential zone. Uh, you know, I think you, you look at a nursery like Skillen's, uh, Broadway Garden, something like that. Uh, you know, I, I think all of us, you know, could envision perhaps people wouldn't like that next door to their homes. And I, you know, I think that the original framers of that ordinance probably had that in mind keeping that away. Certainly, they didn't have, you know, in one of the large farms in Cape Elizabeth, keeping out, you know, the, the regular operations that occur, their greenhouse nursery type thing. But we discussed having a specific proposal for you to address, but felt, you know, as, as Councilor Jordan has suggested, there might be perhaps to see what the needs are uh, to talk to the people who are really in the business of, of farming, agriculture, horticulture, horticulture uh, to find out what their needs are, and then to draft the ordinance from that, rather than to come up with something that people as unexpert as myself. Um, but but just to go back you know, right tonight to review what specific, do you, do you know offhand what ordinance we're talking about? Yes, you're talking about the permitted uses in section 19 under RA zone and under uh, business zone. You might wish to extend that to the RC zone. There is no specific proposal. All right, are there any other questions or comments? I just, I yeah. just have a comment, and I think it's mostly for the people that's sitting out here, and I feel it's a matter of interpretation. I still think horticulture was part of agriculture, and I think that they kind of drew a fine line 
when they pressed the issue as far as stopping an operation. And you look up in the dictionary, it says it's a form of farming, so I would almost think it was agriculture. Now, I could be wrong, but the problem is is a greenhouse and a nursery. Now, your interpretation of a nursery and mine might be quite a lot different, so it's going to take quite a detailed change in the ordinance to get this defined so anybody can grow a tree or some other sod other than a maple or something to that effect if they're going to get that technical. I think it's a shame that we even get into this. I always thought the RA zone was for farming, agriculture, and agriculture and agriculture to me is the same thing. And But I guess when the attorneys get into it, the experts, farmer don't know a hell of a lot. He's got to go back and redo it. Thank you. Well, I guess that's why we have an audience committee, so that when there are problems with interpretation, that we can address them. And I'm sure that we'll get this problem taken care of after a lot of a lot more hard work and a lot more discussion. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of sending uh, this item to the audience committee for further study. Uh, he happens to be the one that's involved in this. Oh, okay. He's All the right. Then why don't you come He's forward? He's the one I'm that sorry. the town closed down. Okay. Sure. Come on forward. My name is Stu Rich, and uh, I work for Bob Monks down on the Ram Island farm, and I'm afraid it's my operation that has created all this uproar, and I apologize for contributing to the already, <laughs> already overworked load of Mr. Latore. And his committee. <laughs> uh, and his committee, yes. Uh, the the uh, ordinance that we have a problem with is 19-2-5, Section C, in the business zone. And it permits in the business zone horticultural activities, including nurseries, greenhouses, and commercial sale of such products. Uh, what, what we're trying to do down there is to to make our lands work for themselves a little more so that we can fend off the the increasing pressures on land use in the town development and otherwise. Um, I'm trained as a forester. I don't know cabbage. Uh, so it was my idea that we could grow trees uh, and sell them to people like O'Donnell's or Gilly Jordan or folks like that. So we set up uh, an operation where we were growing trees. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people know that is a nursery. And under the ordinance existing, that is not permitted. Neither are commercial greenhouses, uh, which brings into question whether or not any of the farmers in the Cape can operate their greenhouses now. Uh, or I, I don't know whether any of probably most of them would be grandfathered, but they certainly couldn't expand their operations uh, to, to use their greenhouses in an agricultural manner. What we would like for the ordinance committee to do is to carefully review what their concept of agriculture is and isn't, what they're, what they're trying to promote for the use of the land in the RA zone and what they're trying to prohibit. We feel that we're just growers and we're definitely a part of agriculture, as, as Mr. Jordan was, was speaking a little while ago, and that we are within the spirit of the law. The Oxford Dictionary defines horticulture as the cultivation of a garden, the art or science of cultivating or managing gardens, including the growing of flowers, fruits, or vegetables. And we don't believe that the ordinance <laughs> people wanted to prohibit gardens from the IRA zone. Neither do we believe that it, they wanted to prohibit uh, the growing of nursery crops from the IRA zone. Uh, however, the language needs to be clarified. And we'd appreciate your consideration. Thank you. You'd be available at a meeting yes, anytime? Sir, I certainly would. But thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Rich.
I see we have another farmer who would like to comment. That is too loud. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you it's three. <laughs> yeah, just a quick little comment. I've only heard, Ken Maxwell's my name. I've only heard just a little bit through the grapevine as to what went on, and probably this is the most technical explanation of it there. But just quickly, I, I will say that I've been very happy being involved in agriculture in the town, and I hope the town's been happy the other way around. But the, as I travel around the state, everybody asks me, boy, it must be hideous down there in the Cape, the pressures, the taxes, this and that, and everything else. And I've told them that the town has always treated me very fairly. I have no gripes with the town organization, okay? But there are many ways to help kill off a farmer. We've got a lot of things working against us. And it's creeping in, and it's getting more tighter around the necks every minute. By the town, I'll suggest two quick ways. One way is development. Everybody loves to put the house as near as they can to the farming operation. I'm blessed now with several houses that have been built in the last few years, and I, I wanted to take a tape measure, catch them when they're not home, but I think about 25 feet from the line. Well, now, uh, they enjoy that, and I hope, they, I hope they will, but the potential is a problem right there, every one of those people. There's going to be dust, there's going to be this, there's going to be that. But the other way where you can really make it difficult for us is to start nitpicking over many little things. You can look me in the eye and you can say, Ken, I'm glad you're here and involved in agriculture and all of that. But when I come in and I want to take a deep breath of air, you say, whoops, we'll give you a half a breath, but no more. The last time I dug a water hole, it cost me more to get permission from the town than it did to dig the hole. Okay, well, things are changing but those are the ordinances that have slowly crept in. Uh, um, <coughs> oh, there's one more point there that I've, I've skipped over. But I want to give you people another word to think about. I'm not an agricultural person. Don't say that I'm involved in agriculture, because I'm not. Now, maybe I'm completely illegal here, because I am an O'Leary culturist. Now, is that allowable in Residence A? I'd like to have you tell me right now. What are you again, an O'Leary culture? O'Leary culture. <laughs> Under my interpretation, it is. I don't know. Uh, oh, it is. I yeah. don't know. No comment. Yeah, it, it isn't a disease. <laughs> but this is just that, that you try to protect people. And when you try to get it too tight, you're just strangling it. That's all it is. I believe any agricultural operation in any general term if they're living at peace with their neighbors and they're not dumping the manure pile on the neighbor's line or building a greenhouse close to the neighbor or whatever it is, you've got to bend and let them do it. I just built a new greenhouse two or three years ago. Mr. Daigle knows about it and all that. I get to permit whatever it was, but was it legal in IRA? I don't know. I went and did it because it was all part of my operation. As my operation changes, if I don't have room to breathe, It'll take me 20 minutes to put the sales signs up. I talked with, uh, you know, the board of directors of Maxwell's Inc., the younger generation. I said, what do you think? He was groaning about opening the market and these type of things. I said, what's the future? What do you think five years down the road? And he says, let's sell out and retire. It'd be a lot easier. So these are the factors that we're facing. I, I've been dreaming about building a retail market there by the medical building. I can see winds here that make it quite difficult to do that. I'm not going to build just a little two by four tent that I can take down every night when the building inspector comes along. It's got to be something attractive and something with some money in it. But I can see where it's going to cost me some money to get approval to have a roadside market there if it's legal. If I can get a sewer connection and if I can do this and if I can do that, it's getting technical now to stay alive in the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. So thank I'll be you. glad to help out. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Thank you. And thank you for volunteering to help no, out. Yes, uh, the manager would like to make yes. a couple of no, comments. No, just general comments. Right. I would like to clarify two points for the record. First first of all, the, the particular party that's involved here, Seawood Nurseries, has filed an appeal to the, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and they 
to, uh, to see about the interpretation of the, the code enforcement officer's position. Uh, that, is, that is proper and uh, is, the, is the way that it should go. Secondly, I would like to point out uh, that we have, have not actually closed down any operation. Uh, we, under the, the current interpretation until the zoning board tells us differently, uh, we will not allow any expansion, uh, be it new greenhouses, new nurseries, that sort of thing. We will allow people to grow and sell plants and continue things as they are, but we, we are not actually going to uh, close them down uh, at this point and have no intention of doing that and uh, trust that uh, the ordinance will be interpreted uh, as it should be by the board and then ultimately the council deals with the, the larger issue. Okay, Council Carson? Could I ask the manager then, uh, not being completely aware of this except through this information that we got tonight, you said that no business has been closed down that was existing. But was, can I just ask this, was a facility built that was supposed to go online this season and is unable to do so? Yeah, the facility went online and the question was not raised until the particular facility put out a sign on Route 77 that said Seawood Nurseries. And that caused us to relook at the ordinance, uh, particularly the building inspector to relook at the ordinance to see, first of all, if the sign was permitted. And then when it was looked to see whether or not the sign was permitted, it was it was noted that perhaps nurseries, greenhouses, et cetera, et cetera. That isn't all it said on the well, sign. Uh, it says, see what nurseries, wholesale quality growers. Well, what I'm concerned about is the mere economy of it, and listening to Mr. Maxwell and Mr. Rich, the mere economy of, of building a facility that was thought to be, I mean, I understand these things happen, if, if this facility was built with dollars to go online this spring for products to sell and eventually is going to be allowed to continue it, I'm concerned about the amount of dollars that, you know, Mr. Smith, whoever he has put into that facility, and now his business is shut down and the cost of paying that. And I would assume that this be acted on as quickly as possible one way or the other. And I have great concern about the time. Yeah, we have not shut anyone down. I, I we, want but to the again present make interpretation clear. does not allow someone to open that they thought they could open. This particular one was allowed to open and is, is, oh. a, is as far as I know, and it, hopefully a going concern. Okay. It opened, la it opened last fall. It did get shut down. But now... It is got shut down for at least two days, and then and they lost some sale of some plants. But, I but they're back in business now. Okay, all, that's all I want to understand is the economy of the situation while we're interpreting the ordinance. Council Latour? I'm curious, just for more background for me in terms of the building permit uh, situation in our town. I, I assume a building permit was applied for. It, was there anywhere written on the permit in terms of what the use was going to be? In other words, how could the building permit ever be issued and this thing allowed to be built? knowing what the intention was going to be and yet not allowed to run. And also, how could we have, a few years earlier, another greenhouse was allowed not only to be built, but to be open and run. This seems like there's some real strong mis misinter misunderstanding, let's put it that way, of the ordinances, or misapplication, inconsistent application. Yeah, I, I think it might be fair to say it's inconsistent application. Uh, you know, I, I think it you know, was not fully realized at that point that they were, were, were in fact, not permitted uses. Uh, you know, it's, it's regrettable that they weren't picked up earlier and that the situation was not squared away. But what about in terms of specifically on the building permit use? I have not looked over this particular building permit. Was there anything that said this is going to be used as a nursery? Or no. So what, what, did, what did the building permit look like in terms of what you said it was going to be? Just a structure on the farm? Or? The, well, I didn't personally fill out the building permit at PCH where it did. Uh, the building permit was for a greenhouse and residence in the same complex. There's a, a residence attached to a greenhouse. It, it more or less came into us as a caretaker's home. Uh, but but not there were sure big before. bucks in that and, and with big dimensions. And I would, I would have thought that they would have said, geez, uh, you, you can't be using this tremendous uh, building for your own use. Okay, we do have a motion before us, and this is certainly a very important discussion. And I'd just like to add before we do vote on the motion that one of the, one of the four major goals of our town's comprehensive plan is to maintain the rural character of the town. And it certainly is a goal, I think, of everybody on this council. 
So uh, we do not, by design, want to in any way thwart farming in this in this town. It's it's an industry we want to encourage. So I think we're always pleased when items like this are brought to our attention so that we can deal with it. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think I, I would like to uh, take a vote now on the motion. Or is that one more comment? I'm sorry, I can't see very well with the lights that are shining back here. Yes. Yep. Richard Davis, uh, members of the council. Uh, I'm not a farmer. Sometimes I wish I were because oh, come on. They, uh, <laughs> they're more practical than all the rest of us put together. But I know this council is committed to the farms in the town. And I know the people on the council. I know how they feel about it. And there's many people in the town that feel that way. And it's going to be a sad day in this town when we drive along and we don't find any farms anymore. Sure. And this is a very delicate subject. And unless we're very careful, that's going to happen. Now, for the council's uh, benefit, I was on the planning board over 20 years ago when some of these provisions were put in the ordinance. They were specifically put in to encourage farming. The provision with the, uh, the stands where an, an owner of property for products from their land or from the sea could be sold to the general public were put in there to encourage people to sell their products you know, on their property. At the same time, it would be a, a real problem if someone with a, maybe an acre lot uh, put up a, a greenhouse on, uh, you know, along the uh, main road. So that is a problem, and that's something that was considered you know, by the board at that time. We know that all the farms are, are grandfathered in the town, and the problem may be for the expansion of some of these farms, and that may be an area that the council should address with modernization and, and the changes that have taken place in farming. I mean, maybe the ordinance should be changed uh, in that respect somehow, but I really, I, I think the council should be very careful uh, how it handles this, and whatever it does, it should, if anything, uh, take steps to try to encourage more farms and to protect the farms that we have. Thank you. Thank you very much for your advice and history lesson also. <laughs> yes, Council Jack. Well, I just wanted to tell Dick that uh, in this particular area, uh, they've only been farming there since about 1640, but it was a new building. <coughs> and that's the new building is the thing that ran into trouble, not the grandfathering of farming. It's hardly long enough, Lester. <laughs> All right, are, are we ready to vote on this item now? All right, all those in favor of sending item number 93 to the Ordinance Committee? Aye. 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 Vote is unanimous. Item number 94 is to consider referring to the Ordinance Committee again a proposal from the Planning Board regarding residential conversions and condi conditional uses. This, uh, these recommendations were proposed by the Zoning Board and have to deal with converting uh, a single-family home into a two-family home. Uh, there are additional standards being recommended by the Zoning Board. It's been sent to the Planning Board. The Planning Board has approved of, uh, these recommendations and has sent, uh, sent them on to us now for our Ordinance Committee to look at. Would someone like to move that these recommendations be sent to the Ordinance Committee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yeah, and uh, change to Section 19-4-7-D. B? D. 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 Like in day. Yeah. Uh, talking about single family dwellings, I think again, maybe in the modern day, you're going to have to come up with a little better definition of that because I don't think, I don't see what difference it makes if it's two families or ten people. Like sometimes there are ten that aren't even family members live. And sort of like communes today just to share the cost of living. Uh, a lot of rents might be just a one-family house, but they've got maybe a dozen people living there. And uh, I just, I was wondering if maybe you might want to address that. Frank, have you taken note of that yes. suggestion? Yes, I okay. am. Are there any other suggestions or comments? All right, all those in favor of the motion to send these items to the Ordnance Committee? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries six to nothing. Right, item number 95, to consider a report from the Appointments Committee. Uh, Doug Tinsman is, 
the chairman of the appointments committee, and this is in regard to two vacancies on the uh, cable TV advisory board. Councilor Tinsman. <clears throat> well, we initially voted on appointments made by the appointments committee, recommendations made by that committee back in uh, February meeting with uh, two holdouts because we had not changed the ordinance that was going through your, your uh, ordinance committee at the time uh, to increase the size of the cable TV advisory board from five to seven members. That's happened, and uh, the two members that we have asked that this council approve as new members of the uh, board are Arthur Skip Anderson and Jeanette it was a lot easier to pronounce than she was the interviewer. She's a super lady. Gigli Medi. Mm -hmm. uh, for terms to expire on uh, March 1st, 1990. Second it. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item number 26 is to consider a proposed lease renewal with the South Portland Church of the Nazarene to operate a day daycare center at Fort Williams Park. And I'll ask the town manager to speak to this item. This is a one-year lease for the uh, South Portland Ch Church of the Nazarene to continue to operate the Lighthouse Daycare by the Sea in one of the two offices' row buildings. Uh, the lease would begin on June 1 of 87 and end on May 31 of 88. Uh, the school department does perhaps might have some long-term interest in this building. Uh, that is one reason why we're just renewing it for a one-year period. Uh, the lease amount uh, has been increased 25% uh, from the previous year and is now at an amount of $6,000 per year. In addition, the, uh, the tenant pays uh, all of the, the interior custodial work, uh, pays for the heat and all the utilities with the one exception of water. Uh, in septic service, uh, which we pay for out of the port system. All right, would someone like to make a motion in regard to item number 96? Council Attorney? I move that we accept the proposed lease renewal with the South Portland Church of the Nazarene. Second. Would Any the discussion? town manager, we have to have the town manager. Authorize to authorize the lease. And, and authorize the town manager to sign the lease on behalf of the town council. Second it. Any any discussion? Any comments from the council? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 That motion also carries unanimously. Item 97 is to consider a, re a progress report on the town council goals. Uh, last December. Uh, after the local election, the town council uh, held a meeting at which time uh, we went round the table to establish what our goals were for the year. And we agreed at that time to review periodically during the course of the year the progress being made on those goals. So uh, we have tonight before us uh, the 32 goals which we <laughs> had aspired to uh, reach this year. And I think uh, um, we are making excellent progress on, on many of them. Uh, in fact, uh, unless counselors have any specific questions or any, uh, any agenda items here that, that they see are not uh, receiving the actions they had hoped, uh, I would think that we would just accept this report at this time. Uh, yeah, Michael, do you have a comment? I would like to make one quick mention of uh, goal number 14, clamp down at Fort. There was some concern with drinking and other activities at the Fort. Uh, there have been over 20 summonses for liquor law violations, uh, and as well as at least one uh, violation on, on drug charges. So uh, that is very much ongoing, the clamp down, and uh, I state it publicly so that, you know, to forewarn everyone that uh, the police department is very serious uh, about enforcing uh, the liquor laws uh, at Fort Williams as well as uh, drug laws. Yes, Councilor Charlton. Yeah, uh, item 23, affordable housing. That isn't exactly the way I put it. I said to make the town affordable for people to live in is what my idea was. And, and if you people on the council will just remember that when you vote for the budget this year. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, think of, of all the things that are happening this year with the, with the 
new sewer user charges and the uh, hookup charges and the new assessed value of homes. Uh, please uh, keep the uh, the rising sewer rate down to a minimum. That would help make the town affordable for the people who live in. Thank you, Council Job. Council Bill Job. I have just like get an update from the manager on a couple of them. Okay. Spilling Bridge. Where are we at? I understand they had the bid openings and what have to do you have any late information? Not all that late. I spoke to one of the deputy commissioners of the main department of transportation last week. They did receive bids. They were a little bit over their engineer's estimates. There were some technical problems with them. Uh, however, they expected those to be ironed out and to award the bid uh, uh, around now. And, uh, the deputy commissioner said he would call me uh, if, if there was a problem. I have not heard from him. Number, number 22. Police roadways are trashed, considered during budget process, not done. Why? I don't remember anything in the budget that we needed to add to the budget, to just have the police. Now, maybe I misunderstand this one here, but the way I put it in, that one of the goals is for the, was for the police department to try to pick up these people that leave half of their trash by the time they get to the transfer station, bags and what have you. Now, what did that have to do with the budget? I think there were, there were two aspects to this issue, and maybe in, in the next update it should be better spelled out. One of which is the, is the one that you're talking about, is to encourage the police, if they, if they see trash coming out of a vehicle along anywhere in Cape Elizabeth, to uh, summon them for lit litter law uh, violations. Secondly, there was the issue of, you know, what were we going to do as far as actually going along the roads picking up the trash. And when we were looking at different implementation strategies earlier on, one of them that that was discussed was the possibility of actually adding some funds for some uh, to hire someone to help with that. We we did not do take that approach, and that's why it does mention that it, it did not become part of the budget. Well, I <coughs> I thought in the way I understood it that the police department I know they would do something if they see it come out of the back of the vehicle, but it seems so someone within the town, if they see a bag of stuff, could kind of take a peek in it. Maybe they could find out where it comes from. Has any initiative been done in that direction? Yes, we, we do that regularly. Uh, as a matter of fact, I spoke to someone who left three bags of trash in the poor farm uh, last, and they spoke to me at the fireman's dinner the other night, and I told them to get me the names out of the trash bags. There were people from South Portland. Uh, <laughs> So uh, as, soon as, as soon as that individual passes along those names to me, they'll either get a, a letter from me or a, a visit from our police department. In addition, we, uh, we have gone through trash left at the point entrance and a number of other places, uh, and it's people do leave envelopes uh, there for things addressed to them, and we have never hesitated to call people and to ask them to pick up their trash. That's all I have. Any other uh, questions or comments on the town council goals, Council Tory? I, I don't know if this is this is kind of an offshoot of council, town council goals, and it was a letter to the editor in Friday evening's paper, which I don't know if you've seen, Mr. McGovern, regarding the cleanliness of Fort Williams. Do you perceive that there is a trash problem? I, I don't know if all of you have seen it. Storm a trash, they're storm, talking about. Storm trash? Yeah, I don't think they're, they're talking about the beaches and stuff, the big logs and all that stuff. I think it's a, accumulated debris along the shore, roads, and batteries, though. So, sure, comma. Sure, comma. Roads, comma, and batteries. Uh, I think they mean, I don't know, I, I, I don't particularly perceive of an overwhelming problem with trash in, at Fort Williams, and I'm sure there's a crew that goes in after the heavy weekend, but I was just wondering on your comments on it. Do we, do we have weekend crews there picking up the trash and policing the area, you know, for trash? Yeah, the, um, th there's a number of issues there, which I think were, were in that woman from South Portland's letter. Uh, first of all is, is the issue of the shore. The beach has been a mess uh, since uh, the floods up the rivers. Everything got dumped on the Cape Shore. Uh, there's, you know, we could pick it up a little bit, but we will not have a beach there this summer. Uh, some years we have one, some years we don't. Uh, the bunkers, uh, as you're heading down near the one towards Portland Headlight, uh, as you go down over that hill, uh, it is messy right now. That, that was used as a temporary stockpiling area 
for the building of the stone walls. Unfortunately, the building of the stone walls has dragged on. I've spoken to the, the contractor who is doing the stone walls and told him it had to be done by June 30th. Uh, so once he is done with that work, that particular firm, we will bulldoze that over. When the ball fields are done over by the schools, we, we do expect some excess loam, and we, will, we plan then to spread that loam over that particular bunker there to clean up that area. The third issue is the one of overall trash. Uh, quite frankly, the, the fort is always, there's a lot of trash around at this time of year. Uh, when the rangers come on, that's one of their duties, uh, is to pick up the trash. You know, we empty the barrels and do all that sort of thing, but, uh, but you, you can see, particularly even more so outside the fort, along the roadway there, there is quite a bit of trash at this point, and this is when we begin cleaning that up. So it has to do with somewhat that the rangers aren't on yet, and so it's been extremely busy at the, at the park, and when they come on, then that subsides that problem. Yes, right now it's, you know, in a few areas, it's the accumulation of winter trash along some of the gullies and uh, on the edge of the woods. The things that are on their way to the dump that blow out of people's cars. <laughs> Can I, can I just ask one other? I, this seems to be appropriate you know, time to talk about some of these. Could you refresh my memory again on what, what is the chances of getting Crescent Beach State Park to open on weekends even before Memorial Day? If it hits 81 degrees and we have traffic, <laughs> just, I mean, I don't know how many of you went by it on Sunday, but it was incredible. And then it is a danger to pedestrians. There was no question. Other times, you know, it's been debatable whether it was a danger to pedestrians. Sunday, it was a danger to pedestrians. I can't, I can't see why we can't make some request or something to open Crescent Beach on weekends, you know, from May or whatever, even early April. One thing, we could police the ordinance so that the people couldn't park in the bikeway. Okay. But, but is there some formal way that we can request that, or as a, as a council send a letter to some state you know, agency asking that the gates be opened or, you know? Yeah, I, it's, I have no idea why that was not open. I presume it was not open yesterday? Yeah, it, it, was, it was down. Sure. I was down at Kettle Cove, but didn't go over that far. Uh, you know, it certainly seems to be a reasonable request, and if the council would like me to send a letter uh, to the director of the State Bureau of Parks and, Re Parks and Recreation, I'd be glad to. Now, they, they give some reason for not opening it other years that they need to winterize it, but certainly yesterday there was no reason to have to plow snow or, uh, or other reason why it could not have been open. I would appreciate it on my own. You know, that's how I feel. I'd love it if you could send a letter. And I think, I think it's a, a real safety hazard to have all those cars yes. in that bike zone when when there were a lot of bikers out this weekend too mm -hmm. and they had to maneuver out around the cars and when they get hit i think we'd be liable if we don't police that okay any other comments on the goals well yeah. on the goals i just think that i speak for the whole council of congratulating the manager who now has a master's degree in public policy which was a personal goal of his during the goals process he received his, his degree on May 9th, and I certainly speak for all the council. We congratulate you on your new educational status. Thank you. Job well done. And he has a very interesting paper that uh, he has written, too, on the effectiveness of the Maine Municipal Association and their lobbying efforts in Augusta. So I think many of you might be interested in looking at that. Next step, Dr. McGovern. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You want me to read that paper? <laughs> Uh, one of the council goals this year was to implement cable broadcasting, and you can see that we're right on uh, target for doing that by our, uh, the production tonight, and all of our other goals are on target as well. Uh, that concludes the formal items on our agenda, but at this time in, in our meeting, we ask any citizens present uh, to bring up items that, are not, uh, that have not been discussed, that are not on the agenda, or anything that they would like to bring forward. Is there anybody here tonight who would who has anything to bring to our attention. Okay. If not, then a motion to adjourn would be in order, and then we will adjourn downstairs to a, work so a workshop session with Glenn Kirstein, who is a consultant uh, that we hired to do some work for us on our auditing and accounting uh, programs in the town. Madam, yeah. Before we adjourn, I was just wondering if appropriate time for me to bring up a request to change one of the uh, meeting t days that we have here would be now, so maybe that the public could know. I mean, if it can be discussed among okay. council, just, sure. just for the chance. Mm -hmm. For me, unfortunately, I didn't realize that May 28, 1987 was going to be chosen as one of the dates to have the proposed budget hearing and budget adoption. I can't be in attendance, and I was wondering if there was a time later that we could choose where everyone could be here. I know Lester's going away, but if there's some way, I, I would ask 
beg the indulgence of my fellow counselors so that we could move that date. How would May 27th be? That's, that's the Wednesday. That's the Wednesday of that week. Wednesday instead of Thursday. Does anybody have a problem with May 27th? For the public hearing? Uh, the uh, budget? Uh, RWS uh, may change their meeting to the 27th because they know that uh, Cog was going to have a meeting and so I don't know. But, it, but it, I guess I guess uh, 27 is all right with me right now. It's open right now. Okay. We have to check that with the uh, school board and make sure that they haven't scheduled another meeting yet. Okay. But if it's all right with them, then we'll reschedule that meeting for May 27th. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I move Is there the anything else? Yeah. Councilor Carson. I move Councilor Jern. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous like everything else tonight. <laughs> in a couple of minutes, we've got